Hello everybody, JP here. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about Avi West. This is actually one of the products. It's called the Air 320. It can be used out in the field for remote productions to send a live stream from any location using what we call a bonded cellular connection, either 4G or now the popular term 5G. We're gonna talk a little bit about this product as well as the family of products. Look at their StreamHub cloud and check it out. Let's go. Okay, so let's take a look at the Avi West products. They have several here that they have sent me to be fully transparent. I'm not being paid for this review, uh, but they did provide these products for me to evaluate. In particular, we'll be talking about the Air 320. Now, there are several parts of their family of products, and in doing some research with Avi West and learning more about them, um, Avi West is what I call a professional grade encoding type solution and a set of solutions that give the capabilities to do a variety of different live in the field delivery uh, with encoders as well as other types of devices and in the Air 320's case this is part of their transmitter series of products. Now they have an Air 220 and an Air 320 and I believe one other unit. I'll put some links back to their page for the Air transmitter series. These are basically uh, what we call bonded IP type uh, setups where you can basically do uh, live in the field using HEVC uh, or H.265 or H.264 uh, type of transmission. You'll see HEVC used a lot more. What that is is basically better compression for the send from one site to another. Um, the, the, in the Air 320 unit here that they sent me, um, it actually has four uh, spots for four different we call SIMs, which would be your cellular SIM units, like you would put similar to what you put in your cell phone, and then being able to have a connect to a variety of different networks in the field for a bonded cellular network connection point. Uh, you could do a local record for on an SD card for a local record, or you can send a live feed from these units into your remote production facility into uh, what they call their Stream Hub solution, which is both a fixed server, and I have one of them here, and a cloud-based solution, which I'll give a tour here in just a few moments. The Air 320 unit also has the ability to have multiple interconnect type options. So you'll see here when I open all these up, you're gonna have an SDI in and an SDI out, an HDMI in and an SDI, or HDMI out. Uh, the out is gonna be your return video feed from remote production, so if you had a remote uh, team studio and they want to send a return feed such as the host maybe doing a live in the field interview or doing an interview basically where you have somebody in the field and they're seeing like at a news let's say a news organization where they're talking to the local studio host uh, they're sending that feedback to the field reporter uh, but you could also have an interview for another type of show uh, so there's a lot of different options there to be able to do that. Um, they have, uh, you can have your own external audio plug into it if you don't want to use what we call embedded audio through SDI or the HDMI video source. Um, they have the connections there. You have comms for, for your camera team, those to be able to communicate back with the remote studio. They have an option for communications uh, to route that through, as well as uh, additional options for running local power, uh, the battery lasts for quite a long time. I have two batteries that they sent me, uh, as well as uh, a couple other products they put uh, supplied with that, such as this case, which you could use in the field. Uh, so there's ways you can mount these on the cameras, provide you a little uh, shoulder there so you can carry it around. It also uses, in the field, uh, for the transmission of their, most of their encoding products, they have two options. One to use is, is to use their SS, SST protocol. Uh, which is their way of packaging the transmission process, sending the data from one site, that's this, off of this unit, and transmitting it back into the remote studio. They also support SRT, which is the Secure Reliable trans, uh, Transport Protocol, and being able to do that. So I took this unit and I did a field test. Um, so let's jump to that field test and give you kind of an example and show that here just right now. Okay, this is the Air 320. I'm out here in a park in Irvine, California. We're doing a quick field test to show how I'm sending a stream from my camera. I'm using a Sony A6500 going into the HDMI port of the Air 320 
sending that in a live transmission into the StreamHub cloud. Now, there are two options you can do with remote productions environments is that you can send it into the StreamHub cloud or into the StreamHub server. And we'll talk about that here shortly. In this setup, I'm using H.265 or otherwise known as HEVC for the compression, saying that in a live stream with a specific audio bitrate. And I'm actually embedding the audio with the video, which is an option in the StreamHub cloud that you can do. If you had a separate audio source, you could do that into the Air 320. So we're taking this using a currently 4G connection point and then send that into the StreamHub cloud. That will then be received from the operator perspective and then we'll show another viewpoint of that. And then what it will do is once you stop the live recording and I'm having somebody record this for me right now, it'll actually transcode the file into an MPEG-4 format, which you could download and then edit or you know, use that for another type of production. Okay, so that was the field test. Now, as I mentioned, uh, this unit has a lot packed into it. It's a professional grade type encoding for specifically around bonded transmission type processing. Um, and looking down at the notes is that, you know, it's really kind of a flexible encoding standalone for standalone video as it's in addition to high speed internet access. You could have, again, local ethernet, you can go off the SIMS, um, and that you can also have uh, the ability to do HEVC, uh, which or H.265 and H.264. Uh, you can use it on Wi-Fi networks. It can act as its own access point for local connectivity for a network if you didn't have uh, a network in your area that you were able to connect to. So there's a lot of options this, from a networking capability, transmission back into your remote studio, as well as doing the live encoding portion. Now, as I mentioned, they do have another series of their products. <coughs> Let's put this over here just for a moment. And that's part of their receiver units. And that's what they call the Stream Hub. That's this. Now the Stream Hub, this is the server appliance physical box. You'll see that, let's pull this back over here. You'll see that it has SDI connections here um, and you can have uh, an SDI in to or, or out uh, that would give you the capability to be able to take that and the remote production studio could then use it for as part of the overall production. The other product they have in this series of their products is called the Rack Series. It's going to be an encoder. Uh, you have your separate audio. You can put your audio in through these mini, mini XLR adapters, two Ethernet ports, um, and you can have an HDMI out and an HDMI in, as well as an SDI out and an SDI in, and two power sources. Now, where would this be used? Well, this could be used out in the field as well, right? Um, it would be a different setup. Obviously, you have to have a local network connection. It's not using the bonded IP cellular type uh, setup as the Air, Air 320 is, but it is something out in the, you know, if you had a local network connection, you could use that, or it's just another encoder from going from site to site um, in terms of like, let's say, your house of worship or uh, a news organization or some other type of sporting production environment where you want to send one uh, feed from one unit to another. You could do the same thing with the Air 320 as well. So a lot of flexibility in their products and doing that. And the Stream Hub receiver that I mentioned, uh, we'll, we'll do a look here at the cloud solution of the product where I'll show you what it looks like when you're sending a live test from the field, capturing it, and then be able to do playback. Okay, so this is a look at the dashboard of the Air of the Stream Hub cloud, uh, and I have several things going on here. Now you will see a series of inputs uh, that's coming off or coming inputting into the uh, StreamHub cloud and have been configured, uh, we have the Air 320 unit, uh, which is taking a live feed of a Christmas tree. Um, so I have a Lumens um, camera via HDMI being plugged into the Air 320, running over a bonded IP connection. We'll look at, at that in just a moment. So you'll see that says My Air. Um, just some testing with SRT. Again, that's another option. The default options in all these inputs are SST. Um, what you can do when you assign a specific task or let's say a file-based solution where you recorded, you encoded, you sent a live feed into the StreamHub cloud, you could then have that transcoded and then assign that to one of the um, inputs and then be able to use that for playback services. We'll take a look at that here in just a moment. And then you have the file explorer where you can go in here and this is where you're going to have where the transmission was being sent from the unit, let's say the Air320, and you go in here and you'll see a list of files here that have been 
received, and then once the uh, the recording is stopped uh, on the StreamHub cloud side, it'll then transcode that file into an MPEG-4 that you can download or then play back. Let's jump over to the remote control feature. And the remote control feature, you're going to see it automatically logs in to the unit. So I'm actually talking to the unit directly as if I was in front of it. And what you're going to see again, similar data, right? The difference is, is I'm going to see what would be looking on the front of the unit. I'm going to see what my default record, record profile are, is, or my, well, my default live profile. You can have different profiles that you can configure on the unit to run as well. And then the destination profile is just something where, just where, I want, where it's being delivered into the setup here on the Stream Hub um, and ensuring that everything is configured the way I needed to have it done. So you'll notice that the Ethernet, Ethernet 1, that network port that I mentioned, has no there's no link because it's not plugged in. We're, we're using the uh, LTE modem, or L, sorry, the bonded LTE types uh, global SIM cards on the unit. Uh, Wi-Fi is disabled. You can enable it. You can set up as an access point, or if it was joined to another Wi-Fi network, generally speaking, you would probably want to connect it, and preferably, to an Ethernet network and direct uh, if, it, if that was an option in the location you're in. But what's nice about this is you've got a lot of options, right? I mean, I'm just touching at a high level, but I can go in here and see what's connected from the video source. I can see the battery level, um, data bridge, they call it. There's another function on that. We'll talk in a, maybe at a future date about data bridging. Um, and then you can go into the admin. You can look and update the firmware. You can reboot the unit. You can get a report. Uh, you can go into the settings. You can manage the settings in terms of live and IO, uh, live, you know, I talked about that live profile and different ones. I can go in here and actually see here's the default right now. You'll see that I set up a broad test broadcast for H.264, but I can go and create a custom one or I can use whatever the default on the unit is. I can go over to the network. I can check, check the network. I can back up the current configuration to save it, um, and I can actually maybe import a configuration that maybe we prefer to use as part of the overall production. So a lot of options on this. Um, I think that's what's incredible about what Abby West has done is that you know we think about the remote productions is that I can go in there and I can remotely manage the units themselves and multiple units where you may have multiple productions going on in the field. And obviously, as as the tech turns the unit on, the location or the or the client. Uh, or who's ever there on site, you turn the unit on, and then you can be basically uh, then manage it from there. And then you can stop the, obviously, live playback so it's not consuming any of the data from via the cellular network or uh, carriers like Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. I can also set it up to do, uh, to actually record. So I can actually start this recording feature on the unit as well and record into StreamHub Cloud. It will then go into that file explorer that I showed you earlier and then save that file config or the encoding uh, capture uh, and then transcode that into an MPEG-4 that you can download or the use for playback. The scenario on this one I would suggest to consider is that this could be a playback back into the remote production team. Maybe they're capturing it. Maybe it's a news organization. They need to capture it and you want to play it out. Uh, maybe it was already kind of you know, pretty crispy in terms of the production value and, and editing, or edited, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and you could play that out from StreamHub into a YouTube or another social, social content network or another content delivery network of your choice for broadcast and deliver that as well or into the remote production team. A lot of considerations, a lot of things you could look at that right now. Um, and so, as I stop that one file, you'll notice here now it's transcoding right now. It's now taking that. I can now stop that one unit and completely take it offline and say, okay, you know, it's just sitting there idle uh, and stop the live stream. So a lot of options here uh, in terms of the, of the value in Abbey West. I would say that you can also take and do many other things. You can go in and configure this to be configured unique to your environment and what you want to do. And if you have any questions, uh, please leave your comments. I'll, again, I will put the links in, in the description to uh, products I've covered today, as well as uh, parts of the other part of the Abbey West Solutions. Um, and I'd love to have your feedback and comments and what you think and how you would leverage and see it for your own needs or any questions we could refer back to the Abbey West team. Again, you know, if this video was helpful, please share the video out 
like and if you're not a subscriber today i'd love to have you as a subscriber if this is your first time visiting um and with that stay safe stay well and we'll talk to you soon in the next video